fighting me racing. This week, the government gave horse racing the green light to return behind closed doors and has given sports fans a glimpse of the normality we all crave. Football, rugby and cricket must wait, meaning Newmarket pretty much has the sporting spotlight to itself. But importantly, racing is also taking the chance to say thank you. Thank you to the heroes and heroines up and down the land that have kept the country going during the global pandemic. Our thoughts with those who have suffered. Of course, it's a time for perspective, and sport can be an irrelevance, but it also brings joy and hope to people's lives. Racing can thrill and entertain. It's gone from a 10 week famine to an immediate feast as we hurtle into the first classic of the season today. And I bet you, like me during lockdown, have enjoyed classic movies and documentaries but now it's time for live unscripted drama that only sport can provide you can't beat it and today in the Kipco 2000 guineas we might see something special in fact we might see an eruption Everyone thinks he is the second coming now. He could just be the best we've ever seen. He is a champion. Pinatubo hasn't sealed this yet. And it's over his making Pinatubo pull out all the dots. But it is Pinatubo's Johan. Remains unbeaten. He really did show his brilliance today. Wings, eats, sleeps, drippings. Which meant a perfect six out of six as a two roll. Today, the date with destiny for Pinatubo as he faces 14 rivals in this season's first classic. One is Al Sahail, one of three for Godolphin. Aidan O'Brien's bid for an 11th Guineas is spearheaded by Arizona with Ryan Moore on board. Five is the well fancied Chimico. Kenzai Warrior goes for Watford supporting owners, the Boras family. First rise in the Guineas for Jason Watts and Harry Bentley and for young Hector Crouch on Military March. Lots of mums will have had a few tipples, I'm sure, post-homeschooling of late. Twelve is the red-hot favourite. The Royal Dornock Golf Club members will be on lucky number 13, while Frankie is back riding for Bally Doyle on Wichita, who makes up the field for the 2020 Kipco 2000 Guineas, live with us at 3.35 this afternoon. And we will enjoy it in the company of Francesca Camani, Richard Hoyles and Jason Weaver. And Richard, I want to start with you because racing took some criticism in March for following government guidelines. What have people made of its presumption? I think so far so good, Ed, would be the message. I mean, racing resumed on the first day when government restrictions were allowed for professional sport. And we'll be hearing a little bit more about the part of the journey that that took a little bit later on. But as you'll see from the shots we bring you from Newmarket today, it is a very, very different racing world you will see this afternoon. There have been extensive protocols that have had to be followed, both in advance of arrival, completing an education test, which you've got a nice certificate, a health questionnaire taken every seven days for those that are on course, and your temperature checked on arrival. Social distancing, obviously a major part, two metres to be enforced, but there will be pinch points, such as loading the horses into the starting stalls. So the starters and handlers will be wearing face coverings, sanitising hands after loading each horse, and only two of them are allowed at the back of each horse to load them into the stalls. But it should be stressed that racing is an outdoor sport where this contact is minimal. And so as a result, the danger of excess spread, etc., is very low indeed. And hopefully, 
and will provide a blueprint for the sport going forward as many more sports face their path to the dumps. Like yourself, Francesca, but the outfit today, I'm thinking a little bit Harry Hill with the wing collar and possibly be on board maybe with the with the uh, headpiece at the moment. So um, yeah, a little bit um, little bit of a strange one as far as you are concerned. Now, stop that, no messing as far as the boxes are concerned today. Shamadal, no longer with us. He passed away just recently. He's only just had Victor Lazorum win the French Guineas. He's been represented up at the highest level on numerous occasions and it would be fantastic if he were to get that English classic on the board. The highest rated juvenile for 25 years, but he's that little bit smaller and the bigger boys have caught up now and we are racing a month behind where we should be. Will they catch him? We'll find out. Official for Callum Rodriguez, five major jumbo Kevin Scott, six is more skill James Doyle and seven or Nate Ford consecutive run in the race. Phil Dennis, eight non-runner, nine the cruising Lord David Egan, ten well done Fox Sylvester de Souza, eleven Harry Queen for Andrea Ancini, twelve Queen's gift Paul Mulrennan, thirteen shades of blue Adam Kirby. We mentioned the well backed far above during the course of the morning and far above is the market leader but he's out to 100 to 30 from 11 to 4. Solid shades of blue at 4 to 1, 9 to 2 Moss Gill, 11 to 2 in a point for both Judicial and Major Jumbo. So the runners down at the start. There is number three far above. Jason, who do you like here? Well, I mean, he's the interesting contender because he's coming back down in distance for the very first time. But um, I have to say that Judicial, who doesn't always have to be held up right at the back of the pack, represents a little bit of value in here. We regularly see him up at the highest level and uh, he put up a, well, a, a remarkable performance. You know, the horse he beat last time, Ed, fairly comfy, none other than Tinto who we saw making all yesterday in our first live race at 40 to 1. So, um, Judicial, he can't win, Ed, if they drop him out the back of the pack because it's a front-runner's track at the moment. He needs to track the pace in the early stages. Junior Camacho, Jason's already had a winner today. Mackinac winning the first race at Newmarket. Now, you might have got a glimpse there of John Dance's colours on Harreen Queen. John Dance, I believe, has got Zoom working at his home which is a miracle in itself. There he is, JD. How are you watching the racing? Yeah, yeah good, thank you very much. Um, got the screen on, ready to, to watch this, and fingers crossed we can uh, have a good run, surprise a few, few people. John, it's great to see you. Um, I like the taking the dress down approach. Remember Thousand Guineas Day two years ago with Lawrence, how close that she was that day. But John, you're there, we can see you, but which members of the family are around watching the racing with you this afternoon. Um, unfortunately, Harvey's just capitulated and fallen asleep. And if I can try and stitch <laughs> Jess up, she's hiding behind the door there. Um, she, <laughs> she's refusing to come on camera because she's refusing to wear makeup in lockdown. <laughs> I feel her. I feel her. It's an effort. <laughs> um, so we, we did try and keep Harvey away for it because Harim's his favourite horse, but he's, uh, he, he's just given up the ghost and gone to hell. And just to confirm, that's your young son, Harvey, rather than Luke Harvey. He's probably asleep as well after a good lunch. Now, what chance have you got here, John? Um, well, she won a listed race last time out, so obviously stepping up to Group 3 is, is, is the next step, and um, I think she's improving all the time. But this is only her second time on turf, so it might be a bit of an education for her. And being by Dark Angel, we don't know how she might handle uh, quick grounds. So it's going to be a learning experience, but... Uh... That's the second slower than the course record that's held by Lock Song. Five furlongs, they won't be hanging around, and away we jump for the Palace House. Major Jumbo jumped a little in the air, but ornate glance out of the stalls, and immediately under Phil Dennis makes the way over to the rail. Far above, holding station as well, nosing up the inside, and these two show the way for a Major Jumbo. Then in fourth place, Dark Shot, the head of the cruising lord, who's pushed along at this stage, in midfield judicial in the white and black, 
red colours with the blue star is shades of blue and then towards the back arrow Siva at this stage Harring Queen flat to the boards and is last far above has moved to the lead past ornate major jumbo being joined by judicial then behind the Moss Gill who's making progress in the pale colours looking for a bit of room so is shades of blue and then behind those Queen's gift and towards the outside well done Fox picking up down into the dip with a furlong to go far above still has this race by the scruff of the neck but judicial in second place has got to within about half a length and continues to close far above holding judicial on the run to the line major jumbo back in third far above will prevail from judicial major jumbo involved moss gill not too far away towards the far side well done fox as well and that photo for third but towards the line far above for pj mcdonald and james tate held off the sustained challenge of judicial a bob of the heads for third goes to major jumbo i think just ahead of well done fox Behind those in fifth place, Queen's Gift and Moss Gill. Shades of Blue never really got involved, likewise Arecibo. But far above, stamped his authority in the race from the halfway stage. Makes it career win number four out of just five starts. PJ McDonald for James Tate in the colours of Sheikh Rashid Dalmuk Al Matsu. And Jason front running again, paying dividends. Oh my word. Now, Ed. Can you remember when we were racing at York and we had that blistering front runner, Ornate, who we said was the ideal lead horse for Batash? Well, this horse, far above, was able to take the pace off Ornate in the early stages. He wasn't the quickest away. If he can get his starting stalls to be just that little bit sharper, to get away on the B of the bang, this is going to be some sprinter to go to war with because to actually match stride with ornate in the early stages francesca he was absolutely flying back down in trip <laughs> yeah absolutely flying like you say to be going that tempo over that trip when it was his first time uh, at that trip with the tailwind as well i think uh, jockey pj mcdonald was conscious of that and he knew he had to and get him out and get him rolling pretty quickly that was really some spectacular win he's only a four-year-old now he's putting together a pretty impressive cv and for the connections trainer james tate and jockey pj mcdonald that uh, could be the start of hopefully a good weekend for them they've got under the stars in the thousand guineas tomorrow started the resumption of racing here on this particular track on Monday. It was red hot weather. They had turned it over quite a much and so it was, it, it was pretty deep. But um, no, it, it should just tighten up a little bit and perfect racing conditions. Sure is. Well, they look to be loading fairly quickly. They're mostly experienced. Uh, older sprinters have had a few issues with horses not going in with the reduction in stall handlers but they're all in we'll hand you over to Gareth Topham. They jump away for the Heed Your Hunt at Betway Handicap and uh, away at fast on the far side Calder Prince also Salatine the Green Sleeves and Cap is going to uh, lie at Handily early with Queso the Red Cap have just up in behind them. Away to the very far right is Al Jari who's been chased through by Lord Oberon and Vitalite. More towards the near side, the white cap of Red Bond is not too far off the speed. That will be tracked through at this point by the favourite Darek, who's in the blue and white colours. Then over towards the near side is King of Tonga. Well back in an orange cap is Ventura Ocean. Rusean also has uh, plenty more in front of them behind as they make the journey down the middle of the race course and on towards halfway. Gloves Lynch is uh, right at the back of the field in a red coloured jacket. But it is Saladin who holds sway by around about three quarters of a length over Keso and then the grey Calder Prince with more towards at this side red bond vitalite is just up in behind them aljari is over to the far side with lord Oberon. Derek is away to the near side now beginning to make up some ground as they head down inside the final quarter of a mile and uh, coming through now red bond but hard driven towards the near side of queso vitalite in the black Derek is now shaken up in the blue jacket near side a furlong left to travel and now the two leaders race quite wide apart this side Derek is quickening up to join vitalite vitalite down the center of the track is now claimed by Derek this side and Derek is getting on top in the closing stages Vitalite trying hard but Derek is too strong it's a winning return for Derek second place is Vitalite uh, back in third at Red Bond and a little break to the fourth well it's been a good start for trainer uh, John Gosden back when racing has resumed he's had 
plenty of winners, and he adds another one here in the shape of Darik, who was the favourite in the hands of Rab Havlin. And Jason, for a while there, they were pretty well spread out across the track, but Darik prevailing over the insider's tip of Vitrolite. Yeah, credit where it is due, Francesca. I think that's around four winners from 15 rides for Robert Havlin. Um, I, I'm, I always tend to believe that this particular side of the track is slightly favoured. Um, Vitrolite goes and commits for home. That team have been in cracking form. Carl Burke, of course, had a Group 3 winner in the Pavilion Stakes with Dubai Station just here on Thursday. But that's an improver and what a very good change of gear and a heads up for the horse back in third red bond he's been put up a whopping 13 pounds for a wide margin success last time but uh robert havlin he's got some fancy rides of course throughout the card here this afternoon at newcastle and none more so than palace pier who's a red hot favorite for our 315 a little bit later on trained by